everyone, it's Ann Shumba with Vista Sotheby's and we're gonna be talking about my favorite subject today, wine. We're standing outside of Uncorked here on Pier Avenue and we're gonna be going inside and doing some sampling of wine with my friend Jeff. Come with me. What I love about Uncorked is it's an incredible wine shop located in the heart of Hermosa Beach that feels like Napa. It's a unique experience where you can come in, wine taste, purchase a gift, and even join their wine club. Uncorked is pretty much your one-stop shop for everything wine. I am here at Uncorked with Jeff Bonafetti, talking about my favorite thing, wine. <laughs> so Jeff, tell us where you're located and a little bit about Uncorked. Well, uh, we are eight years old now, and we're located here in the heart of Hermosa Beach on the upper part of Pier Avenue, right here at the corner of Pier and Monterey Boulevard. And um, we have a tasting bar, uh, we and we have a very large wine club. I have been a member of that wine club, and then I get so busy, I leave my wine here. But they've got lots of great things in the wine club. Everything from Pinot Noir, people who love Chardonnay, which is me, different kinds of reds, and a sampling of everything. And we'll be talking about that in a little bit. We have wines from all over the world, and definitely the wine club members get to enjoy uh, what I like, to, like and what my staff likes to pick for the club each month. I love that, but I don't want to be sitting here talking with Jeff in stools. <laughs> I want to go do some wine tasting. Let's, Let's do go it. do that. Come Let's on. Let's go. Well, we've got wine everywhere, and on this wall, uh, mostly... Sparkling? Yeah. Champagne? Yeah, got some really good sparkling. So maybe try something you haven't tried. Uh, this Brut Cava is made uh, Method Champenois traditional style. Definitely something would be great to try and it's on our tasting list. Okay, so we can I'd start like, with that. I've never, it's been a long time since I had a Cava, so that would be a good one to taste. Great. And then were you thinking Chardonnay? You know me, I love uh, Chardonnay. I know you love Chardonnay. So we just got this one in and we had, um, we had it featured on a Friday night tasting. And I what, think you're what, gonna love it. It's uh, West Side Crossing is from Motion, and it's from Western River Valley. Oh, I haven't had that one. Yeah, so um, so let's try these, and then let's go right to a place you love, Santa Barbara area. Let's try Westerly from Santa Rita Hills. Okay, sounds good. And then maybe, since the weather's getting a little cooler, maybe a... Uh... Something, something to cuddle up to, like a big cab? Yeah. Yeah, I know you like your cabs. Definitely, uh, let's do the 2014 Laird. It's a wonderful wine and it's got some nice age and it's probably ready I, to rock. Actually, I, I love Laird and I haven't had it in a long time, so I'd like to try that. Perfect. That'd be awesome. All right, let's try some wine. Let's do people. it. <laughs> For uh, tasting wine, are these glasses? Okay. <laughs> and we'll start with the bubbly. So t tell people, I've had a Cava before, but for everybody watching, tell, people so, a little bit about Cava and Cava, it's a Cava is from right outside of Barcelona, up in the foothills, uh, just east of Bar oh, sorry, west of Barcelona, get my bearings straight. And um, primarily the grapes are one called Charolo and Paralada, okay. and they're blended together. And then um, there's some traditional white grapes like Macabeo, which is very similar to Chardonnay, that gets, uh, gets in the blend a lot. Okay. They'll adjust it for acidity and, and um, little fruit flavor and then the other the two grapes balance each other the, the charlo and parlata to make it dry or make it a little more mouth-watering this happens to be a kind of a special cava um, give it one swirl that's all you need to do when you when you drink um, bubbles is this would you say this is crispy super dry and crispy this is a brute cava okay. and the special part about it it's made in the traditional style so this, the final fermentation happens this, in this in a really bottle. Good. Yeah, so the final fer fermentation happens in a bottle just like champagne does. And that is not typical for kava. Kava is usually made um, called Charmat style, which in a large tanks right. where they ferment and get their bubbles. But Cheers. this actually, <laughs> this is really good. It's yeah. very nice. Kava has a tradition of being uh, similar to Prosecco, but a little more, a little drier, I sometimes more fruity, bubbly more bubbly. Uh, this is super dry thirst quenching and the pearlage, the bubbles are wonderful in it. What I love about kava in general for everybody watching is it's usually very economical in comparison to champagne. And to me, it's really yummy. 13.99. <laughs> 
and so, trust yeah. me, it's very yummy. Yeah. And it's sometimes that lead, the prices lead you to maybe not consider the wine, maybe consider something a little more expensive. But the key about Uncork too is we have a tasting bar and you get to taste these things. Yeah. And a lot of times you taste, you, you're tasting something you wouldn't normally just go buy or unless a friend turned you onto it or something like that. And that's the great thing about Uncorked. We're your wine friend. Come in here and let us turn you on to uh, wines from all over the place and things that you might not ever consider or have time to consider. It's a lot of fun. And that's it. I'll give you a funny story about Cava is I had a friend who looked at the price point and she'll probably be watching this. And I actually I probably snuck, know her. <laughs> I snuck this into a glass and and we had some other bubbly and she had no idea. Not this particular one, another right. one. And she had no idea. Yeah. That's fun to do, especially with our friends. You know, we have some friends that they're driven a little bit by price and sometimes it does make sense, but a lot of times it doesn't. And if you can just get them to try something. Um, For sure. Definitely with Ann and I, they're gonna trust, they're gonna trust us, right, Ann? We're a safe bet. <laughs> yeah, very safe bet. All right, let's try. Um, okay. Can we leave the bottles up? Yeah, absolutely. So, let's do it. Yeah, I've got so it right there kinda, too. Oh, great. So let's and do um, the Chardonnay. Better closer on there. So for Chardonnay, um, I brought. Jeff, I don't wanna interrupt you, but can I just share this? This is a great um, oh, yeah. thing to have at home. I started drinking champagne. I have a friend that made fun of me because I would drink champagne on a Tuesday or cava. And what's so great is you can open a bottle. A lot of times people think you have to have it for a special occasion. But what I love about these is you can open a bottle and have a glass or two and then still have it the next day. Yeah, the little rubber seal gets widened as you close this and pulled up and then it gives it a little bit of a pressure seal. And the thing is, when you take them back off, make sure you're holding it pretty decent because it might fly off like a regular <laughs> champagne cork and you can redo what you're doing. So some people have fun with that and other people will get a little too surprised by that, not in the right way, but. <laughs> All right, let's try my favorite Chardonnay. So for Chardonnay, um, we have something from Motion Family Vineyards uh, in Russian River. This is their West Side Crossing line. It's a fairly new line for them. They have a lot of single vineyard Chardonnays and Pinots that are upwards of 40 to $100 a bottle and wonderful wines. Um, they also do a Sauvignon Blanc and they do a couple of uh, other reds, um, but they're really well known. Uh, Rick Motion's been in and out of uh, Russian River for over 40 years and known for Chardonnay and Pinot and very award-winning. So, um, and I know you like your Russian River Valley fruit. I do. And what I'm gonna do is bring a different glass because I, I like also, that. we also like to profess um, that drinking in the proper glass in a Chardonnay and Pinot glass is better to open up the flavors of now, the wine. Now, I, I will say, as someone who has done taste testing with the glasses, it does make a difference. It does make a big difference. We've tried it, a Chardonnay in a Sauvignon Blanc glass. We've tried it yep. in a paper cup, and it makes a huge difference on the flavor profiles and the way that the um, wine hits the palate. And, and I'm no wine expert, but I am a wine aficionado. And going back to bubbly, one of the first things most Psalms in, uh, in modern days right now will tell you is don't drink champagne or a bubbly out of a flute. It's too tight. Drink it in a regular glass and you'll get much more enjoyment out of your bubbly. I didn't know that. Yeah. I learned a tip today. <laughs> I love that. All right, let's try the Chardonnay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So tell people a little bit about Russian River and what makes the wine a little different than other areas. Well, Russian River is very unique in the sense that um, you can get a, a, a lot of hot weather during the day and then once the sun dips over on the, on, from the west, in the west, uh, in the Pacific, um, the mountains cut off the heat and it can get really cold there. And so it's called the diurnal shift and that can be anywhere from 12 to 25 degrees, depending on time of year. So the, the fruit there, uh, Chardonnay can be rather hearty white grape, but Pinot Noir, on the, other, on the other hand, is a very delicate red grape. It's a larger grape, very thin skinned. Um, the flesh is not even red on the inside of a Pinot grape most times. And um, Pinot, if not treated properly, can shatter and uh, not give you the same kind of uh, yield that you want to get out of Pinot. And that's why Pinot Noirs, good Pinot Noirs usually are far more expensive than most uh, red blends you would find that are still wonderful to drink, but Pinots are 
you know, they take different, more time, more handling, a little more delicate. A lot of different things can come out of a Pinot Noir. Well, so Chardonnay, on that hand too, and from Russian River, um, gains great character for also from the soil, not just the weather. Well, what I like about this is it's nicely balanced, not overly oaked, still creamy. Yeah. Um, it's very nice. Really demonstrates, really demonstrates the fruit. So for like a wine geek like myself <laughs> and a foodie and a fellow wine geek like Ann, we love to taste uh, wines that taste, you taste a sense of place um, and time. But Chardonnay a lot of times can be on a meter on the really buttery side and sort of sweet. And on the other side can be super dry and misunderstood. So when it hits the middle balance, um, Chardonnay this. can be very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this, this is what I would call an enjoyable and an and affordable Chardonnay too. Yes, and that's very affordable. For 20 bucks or 21 bucks. So that's a know. great price point for a Chardonnay. And it's for somebody who is a big Chardonnay person, it's very nicely balanced. I'm, it's probably my favorite grape. So I've tried pretty much them all. I have not tried this one. So for somebody who drinks very expensive Chardonnay, this is a good, um, nicely price pointed yeah. wine for somebody on the lower end and the higher end. Um, it's great. Mm -hmm. This is a great example. Okay. So let's go to, we'll use the same glass. I'm gonna just put this yeah. one here. Are we gonna use the same? We can for Pinot. Do I have to give up my Chardonnay? You don't have to. All right, I can give get me you a another glass. Pinot glass, my dear. <laughs> I, I poured Jeff. mine a little heavy, so I wasn't ready to. Don't make me you know. give up my Chardonnay. <laughs> so we have Westerly 2014 Santa Rita Hills Pinot Noir. Um, 2014, it's got five years age now, which is a really good thing for Pinot. I think age is much more your friend than not when it comes to most wines. Um, but Pinot Noirs can are legendary for their aging capability, especially out of Burgundy. Where's the actual winery for this? So Westerly's winery is in the eastern part of, um, of Santa Barbara County in Happy Canyon. Okay. So on the east east side of uh, one, the 154 highway, yes. east of Solvang Oops. and Buellton. Okay, oh east, so yeah. down near like um, Melville in that area? No, no, that's west. West, sorry, so the Just other the other part. side, yeah. Okay. So over by where Brander is and uh, all, further away, away is Crescini. Um, there's Happy Canyon Vineyards yes. um, and many others there. This the has a very nice nose. Yeah, the first thing you're going to get, so Santa Rita Hills is where you were talking about near Melville on the west side. Santa Rita Hills is going to give you a very pronounced uh, flavor in the nose. It's very smoky. Yeah, smoky, good flavor. You're getting that from the age of the, uh, uh, the aging of the wine in the bottle too. This is really good. Yeah, but Santa Rita Hills um, has has really come to the forefront of being one of the epicenters in California for great Pinot Noir. Um, there's a lot of great places to have Pinot Noir in California, up and up and down the state. But for Santa Barbara County, um, one of the first really and foremost pretty. places is Santa Rita Hills. And it's funny, as someone who never drank Pinot Noir when I first moved here, I would go wine tasting in Santa Barbara, and this would be the one grape I would spit out and put away. And now, <laughs> 20 years later, it's so funny how your palate evolves. It's yep. one of my favorite grapes and the most food friendly for me personally. That's that's this the thing. Nice. Don't be afraid as you uh, as you grow up or older. Don't be afraid for your uh, palate to evolve. I so, like this a lot. Yeah, it's and a what fun is, wine. What is the price point of this? It's a little bit higher. Um, Santa Rita Hills can tend to be very expensive, yes. as we know, with like sea smoke. Um, and some of the single vineyard uh, selections from you know well-known uh, wineries like Melville and and uh, oh, and a few good. and many others. I mean, there's a lot of great wineries there now. Um, so it's I think it's uh, around thirty. Okay. Yeah, maybe a little bit higher than that. So, but there are some really good value ones you can get there. But sometimes you'll give up a little bit of the structure and flavor for right. the least amount of money. So. Um, but it's still a great wine for that price. So beautiful. Put it right alongside something double the price. So the next one I want you to, I'm going to take it back to Italy because um, you are half Italian. <laughs> and we had this on the tasting list. Um, this is Primitivo. Okay. Uh, this is Primitivo uh, from Salento. So Primitivo is primarily in, in Italy. Uh, 
It got there a few centuries ago uh, from uh, the northern part of the Adriatic, uh, Croatia and Hungary, okay. um, around that area. It is also Zinfandel, the same grape. So the Primitivo grape in Italy is Primitivo, but here we call it Zinfandel. What, um, what area does that come from? From Puglia. Italy? So okay. the heel of the boot, okay. very bottom part. Uh, it's very rocky, volcanic soil there. Um, it gets very dry and very hot during the day, very similar to LA as it, as okay. it is. Um, not a lot of rainfall there, so the grapes that grow there um, on, on the natural uh, water aquifers are very stressed vines, super dry. Um, it's very, um, yeah. ta not tannic, but, but it is dry. Yeah, dry, kind of austere, um, probably, you know, dried strawberry and, and uh, tart cherry, you know, blended with some, some leather and tobacco. So what would you serve this with? Um, a beautiful charred piece of meat that can be a white meat like chicken or that uh, with some savory sauce that can be uh, you know anything red um, okay. it can also cold cuts it also works great with pizza <laughs> pizza is probably one of my favorite foods ever I would give up a steak for pizza very light so Zinfandels in, in California tend to be kind of heavier and a little jammier. This would be nice in the summer if you drank red wine yeah. versus having like a, a cab or yeah. a California Zinfandel. It would, you'd still have that red yeah. flavor Yeah, light, profile. very savory. You know, it's yeah. got an herb profile to it. So I like that. Fun wine. We call we like to say Primitivo is a fun Italian wine. Well, I like and all then, Italian. The Laird Cab. I'm going to open the one that we've been using on the premium list. It's going to be probably so, on fire. I love Laird and I haven't had it in a long time. It's a nice boutique wine. Yeah, it is. They don't make a lot of it. So for people who are looking for boutique wines that love, you know, some of the the larger brands, this is a great wine to try. It's boutique. Um, a lot of people that live in California, I know some people that are watching this are from back east. So it might be a little bit harder to find, but it's a beautiful, beautiful wine. And I haven't had this one in a long time. Usually in this, this main Cabernet, they have like three or four vineyard sites um, and they'll tell you the percentages. This is 100% Cab. It's a great price for what it is. Usually the 100% Napa Cabs um, can be- it Smells good. Minimum 60 to $75. And then they go way up into the, you know, several thousand, well, a couple thousand dollars with Screaming Eagle. It's really but. nice, the nose. Yeah, the nose, you're gonna get a deep, you know, uh, deep vanilla and chocolate, cocoa, yeah. um, dark berries, really opaque. You know, Cab is a gnarly little black grape with a very thick skin and, and a lot of complexity to it. And it's, if you can bring it, who the winemakers that bring it out in, in uh, wines, uh, California Cabernets are really some of the top people, so. It's really, really good. Yeah. I haven't had I that, that one's, in a long time. I mean, this is their largest production. It probably is a couple thousand cases. And um, it looks like it comes from Main Ranch, Flat Rock, Linda Vista. So these are all their family uh, vineyards, um, which are throughout uh, Yountville and Rutherford, Rutherford Bench. This is so, really nice. Yeah. Okay. Hell of a lineup right there. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this tasting with me and share all of this it's with my everybody here. It's a lot of fun. Um, Uncorked is on Pier Avenue in Hermosa. And what I love about it and why we love coming here is it's great for wine aficionados. It's great for people who are just learning about wine. Absolutely. They have um, different tastings that you can do and they're open during the week. They have international, they have all the ones from California, and then the wine club. It gives you the best sample of everything. That's why everybody loves coming here. It's a local favorite. If you are in town visiting, it's a must come in and try on your way to the beach, <laughs> on your way home from the beach. This is the place to come. Thanks so much for tuning in. Like, I'm the Vanna of wine. Seriously, like, look. Hello, Chardonnay, my favorite. Then we go to Pinot. <laughs> what is it? What's her name? Um, what's that movie? Doe, a deer. <laughs>
Accept it. <laughs> Accept it. Chardonnay. And then we go to Pinot. And then we go, oh, 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 Merlot. No, I'm joking. No, don't be filming it. <laughs>